What's up everybody, Sars the Grace here. Now you may have heard, or you may have not heard, a new Kunio-kun game was just announced. It's called Kunio-kun The World's Classics Collection. It's a compilation of classic Kunio-kun games, um, being developed by Arc System Works, makers of other great Kunio-kun games, and other great games such as Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, Double Dragon, and Dragon Ball Fighters. The announcement got me thinking about the Kunio-kun series as a whole. What a hot-blooded fiction that is. The Kunio-kun series. One of the most successful and awesome franchises that still continues to this very day. What a unique video game series. Actually, it's not really unique. It kind of looks familiar to me. But whatever. First game was released in 1986 for the arcade. It was called Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun. Translation? Hot-blooded tough guy Kunio, where the player takes control of Kunio as he fights against the various gangs who bully his friend Hiroshi at the start of each stage. Because in the intro of the game, you see Hiroshi got his ass kicked, and Kunio is out there to kick those asses of the asses who kicked his ass, or whatever. <laughs> well, whatever. It's basically like an Avenger thing or something. He's an Avenger. He avenges his friend, and. It it kind of looks like this, which has really, really choppy animation and choppy controls or something like that. But for the time period, it was good. Like Robin Hood. Ricky appears as the first boss level. There he is. Ricky Samajima's first appearance. Turns out that Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun was actually really cool. And America once said, Hey, your game is so cool, can we buy it? Hmm... Maybe. Okay, here you go, take my money. And unfortunately, if they bought it, people won't understand it because, you know, it's Japanese. So they have to translate the game and completely change it. It was called Renegade. Renegade sort of marks the beginning of a genre called the beat em up genre. And yes, Renegade and the Ketsu Koha Kunio-kun is actually the main inspiration of Double Dragon. So without those two games, Double Dragon would have never been made, and Double Dragon is one of the best, most anticipated beat-em-up games of all time. So Renegade and the Ketsukoha Kunio-kun were legendary games. Anyway, Renegade from the arcade was nearly identical to the Ketsukoha Kunio-kun. Yeah, everything is basically just the same, except Kunio's name is changed to Mr. K. That means Mr. Kunio or something like that. And uh... Ricky's name is turned into Jack and Ricky really really has changed his appearance yeah he doesn't whatever so instead of trying to avenge your best friend instead you're gonna rescue your girl yeah Renegade and the Ketsuko Kunio-kun both of them are not the same they are completely different the only difference is that the story the character designs the stages and the graphics, I guess? No, not the graphics. The only thing that is not changed is the gameplay itself. Yeah, what's the point of that? Anyways, so turns out that Renegade and Neketsu Koa Kunio-kun was actually really cool and people want to play it at home. And they actually can play it at home to their Super Famicom. I mean Famicom. I like to call it Super Famicom because it's already super because it's awesome. Super awesome. Anyways, the Famicom version was... Just the same, Neketsu Koa Kunio-kun. But the intro has changed. Instead of Hiroshi getting his ass kicked, instead he got captured in a car. I don't really know what just happened because I can't read Japanese, dude. This game is nearly identical to the arcade version. But I gotta admit, I love the Famicom version a lot better than the arcade version. Because the gameplay is much more improved. Seriously, it's way better than the arcade game. What other game can you think of when the home version, the home console version, is a lot better than the arcade version? I don't know what I'm talking about here. So yeah, it actually got released in America too. The American version of this game was again Renegade for the any fucking S. Well, it's really identical to freaking Neketsu Ko Kunioka. Just look at it. The second game that was released was called Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo. What the hell? This game is the very second game. Very second. How uh, does anyone ever say that? 
Anyways, this is the second game starring Kunio and the first sports game starring the character. In this game, Kunio leads his school's dodgeball team, Naketsu High School, as he competes against the rival Hanazono High School, and then proceeds to compete against five international teams, England, Iceland, China, Africa, and America. This was released in the United States also, and it's known as Super Dodgeball, in which the Japanese teams became Americans and vice versa. This game was also released for the Famicom, and, in, and again, it's just the same title, Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo for the Famicom. Now, one thing I do not understand, why is that game so glitchy and slow? Um, maybe it's just, I'm just playing it on an emulator. Whatever. This is actually the second Kunyokun game for the Family Computer, or Famicom for short. The game adds two new teams, India and the USSR. That's right, USSR, in Dodgeball. The American version, again, is just called Super Dodgeball, has the main team as Americans and the team to the Soviet Union. And the third game was never released in arcades. In fact, it was never made for the arcades. It was specifically made for the Famicom. This game is the very first Kunyukun game that is specifically made for the Super Famicom. Again, I said Super Famicom because I like to call it Super because it's super awesome. It's called Downtown Neketsu Monogatari. Kunio teams up with his rival Ricky in order to save Ricky's girlfriend from the Rayo High School gang. The game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, which combined RPG elements such as buying items and equipment. This was released in North America as, say it with me now, River City Ransom, the most popular Kunio kun game of all time. In fact, it was also one of the most popular NES games of all time. It's one of the greats, one of the best ever, one of the all-time classic video games. And it's all about saving your girlfriend from the Double Dragon Twins. This was also released in Europe as Street Gangs. And it's really the same thing. But one thing that I found really weird is that... No, it's not really weird, it's actually understandable. Because in the American version of Neketsu Monogatari, River City Ransom, they decided to ditch those Japanese uniforms and go with the casual American clothes to make it look, you know, more Western. And Kunio's name is changed into Alex, and Ricky's name is changed into Ryan. That makes sense. The fourth Kunio Kun game released was Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo Soccer Hen. Translation, Neketsu High School Dodgeball Club, Soccer Edition. This game features all the dodgeball team helping Misako, the manager of the Neketsu Soccer Club, as they participate in the national soccer tournament against other schools. This is one of the few Kunio-kun games which is not to feature Riki Samajima. Yeah, Riki is not in this game, which I found really disappointing. But whatever. This was also released in America, and it's called Nintendo World Cup, in which the game was given a more worldwide theme. And for your information, you can actually play as Kunio in there if you pick the team Japan. If you pick the Japan team, there you can play as Kunio. But I don't really know what's the point of that. If you pick Japan, you get to play as Kunio. But if you pick India, you get to play as another character which looks exactly like Kunio but just changed freaking skin color and uniform. Isn't that a bit racist or something? I don't know. Next is Downtown Neketsu Koshin Kyoku. I like to call it Downtown Neketsu Cross Country. This game features Neketsu competing against three other teams, Hanazono, Reyu, and Interschool Union. They compete in a series of four athletic events, Cross Country, Obstacle Course, Ball Breaker, and Tournament Fire. This was never released in America. That's why I never got to play it when I was a kid, until now. Which I found really disappointing. Japan, you need to get out of Japan more often, because your games are too good to be only in Japan. Seriously, the whole world needs to know. Next is Neketsu Kohakunyokun Bangai Rantohen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Translation, Neketsu Tough Guy Kunio, The Further Brawls. I am glad that that was not the title because it sounds really ridiculous. This is actually the very first Kunyokun game for a portable system. The game is not bad, it was actually pretty cool, but it's fucking weird. 
What's weird about it exactly? Well, this was actually released in North America as not River City Ransom for Game Boy or something, but no, they decided to change it up a bit, like completely change it to Double Dragon 2. Yeah, that's the American version of this game. If you try to compare those, I don't really get it. I mean, really, why is that the American version of Neketsu Koaku Niokun Bangai Rantohen? That's one thing that I really don't get. Also, not to mention, the Game Boy version of Double Dragon 2 has nothing to do with the NES version of Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. Downtown Neketsu Monogatari actually has a sequel. It's called Downtown Special Kunio-kun no Jidaigeki Daiyo Zenin Shugu. Oh, I don't freaking know. Translation? Well, you will not believe this when I tell you. It's called Downtown Special. It's Kunio's period piece. Assemble, everyone! <laughs> That's the dumbest title ever. This game is actually a follow-up to Downtown Neketsu Monogatari, in which the characters act out a period play. Yeah, this... The setting of this game was actually in the 15th century or something like that. This was never released in America, and I found it really disappointing. I don't, because I really want to play Kunyokun games, man. I mean, when I was a kid, I only got to play a few Kunyokun games. Most all of the Kunyokun games were never released worldwide. They were only released in Japan. I wonder why. Well, wanna know why? They're too freaking awesome. Anyway, the next one is called Ike Ike Neketsu Hakibu Subetes Koronda Dairanto. Translation Go Go Neketsu Hockey Club Multi Sport Battle. This game centers around Kunio's attempt to help out his school's hockey club. Yeah, by playing hockey. And yes, this is one of the first games ever. One of the first hockey games to ever exist in this world. And it was actually pretty cool. Although this game was never released in America. How do I explain this? Well, it was never released in America, but it was supposed to be released in America, but it got cancelled. I don't know why. I really don't know why. Next is Bikuri Neketsu Shinkeroku Haro Kanaru Kin Medal. Translation, Astonishing New Records of Neketsu, the Distant Gold Medal. This is actually the sequel to Neketsu Koshin Kyoku, Dante Neketsu Koshin Kyoku. But unlike the first game, Neketsu Koshin Kyoku, that was never released in America. But this, Bikuri Neketsu Shinkeroku or something like that, it was actually released in America. The American version of this game was called Crash in the Boys Street Challenge, which is really identical. To the freaking Japanese version, but you get the point, right? Anyway, this game features not four, but five. So what a huge improvement over the previous game. There's the running mode, the rooftop jumping, the swimming, the hammer throw, and the fighting. Next game was Shoda Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun. Translation? The original Neketsu Tough Guy Kunio. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good title. This is the first Kunyokun game released for the Super Famicom. It is a beat-em-up RPG, set during the end of Kunio's second high school year, as he and his friends take a school trip to Osaka, and they battle lots and lots of people there. Because they're, you know, delinquents, gangs, or whatever, muggers, I think. Next was Neketsu Kakudo Densetsu. Translation, Neketsu Fighting Legend. This game was a tournament-style fighting game, and this game is actually, it offers a unique thing among all of the Kunyokun games that I just mentioned. Because for the first time ever, you get to make your very own custom Kunyokun character. But not his appearance. You don't get to customize his appearance, but you have to customize his name, his birth date, and his blood type. What other game can you think of where you can actually customize your character's blood type? That's awesome. And once you've done all that, you just have to hope by some miracle that you get to create the character that you've always wanted to create. You know what I mean, right? This was never released in America. Next was Kunio-kun no Neketsu Soccer League, or simply Kunio-kun's Neketsu Soccer League. It's the Famicom sequel to Soccer Hen, or Nintendo World Cup, but unlike that one, this was only released in Japan, never released in America. Which is 
really disappointing because that game is really cool. It has so much improvements to the first game. Super shots are much easier to do. You can jump now and blah blah blah. And one thing that I found really impressive about that game is that you can actually form your own strategy, like talking to your teammates. That is awesome. Next was Kunio Kun no Dodgeball Daio Zenin Shugo. It's Kunio's Dodgeball. Assemble everyone! <laughs> This is the Super Famicom sequel to the original dodgeball for the Famicom. Well, that's really all there is to say about that. And then here comes my most favorite Kunio-kun game for the Famicom. And one thing I found really disappointing, this was never released in America. God damn it, man. This game is so cool. Wanna know what it is? It's called Neketsu Street Basket Ganbare Dunk Heroes. Or if you wanna call it River City Basketball, go ahead. This is the final Kunyokun game for the Famicom, which is why it's so awesome. Why? Look at it. It's so freaking awesome. There are three baskets that you have to shoot at, and you can do awesome super shots. Next was Downtown Naketsu Baseball Monogatari. Yakyo de Sho. You know what? Whatever about that. Translation Baseball Tale of Downtown Naketsu. It's a baseball match, Kunyokun. This is the third Kunyokun game for the Super Famicom. This was the first and only game in the Downtown Neketsu series where Kunio is not the main character. So, why am I even bothering to include this as part of the Kunio Kun games? Well, here's a better question. Why would they make a game that features Kunio not the main character? I don't know. Maybe they just wanted something different. Next is Shin Neketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka. The new Neketsu tough guy, the elegy of Kunio and company. <laughs> okay, this is the fourth Kunio Kun game for the Super Famicom. It is chronologically set between Neketsu Koa Kunio Kun and Danta Neketsu Monogatari. Well, whatever. The story is that Kunio and Riki are jailed. They're arrested because they were framed. You know who framed them? Kunio's brother, Ken. Kunio has a brother. Younger brother, Ken. They're not twins. You wanna know what happened? Well, since they were born, child separation just happened. Yeah, that's all there is. That's the entire explanation. I guess that the mother and the father got divorced and child separation or something? I really wanna know their backstory. But all they said is that they were separated from their childhood. Child separation. I wish that was illegal. Next was Kunio no Oden. This was the final Kunio Kun game for the Super Famicom. Not really much to say about that game, it's just a Dr. Mario ripoff, but except it's food. Next was Neketsu Beach Valley Dio Kunio Kun. This is the last Kunio Kun game for the Game Boy. And I really wish I get to play this game because it was super cool, but too bad, it was only released in Japan! Only released in Japan! How many times have I said that already? Only released in Japan. But luckily Japan is releasing so many games to the US and to the entire world. Because everything has changed. The last game to be produced by the original development team was Super Dodgeball. Yeah, just called Super Dodgeball. In Japan, it's known as Kunio no Neketsu Dodgeball Densetsu. This is the final Kunio Kun game released by Technos Japan before the company went out of business. The game was never formally released in Japan and only saw limited release as an MVS only Neo Geo release in North America. One thing that I really found really awesome about this game is that voiceovers. And I really want Kunio Kun to be an anime. I don't know why it's not an anime yet. And after that game was released, Technos Japan went bankrupt. They went out of business. And then, at that moment, since Technos was dead, technically dead, Kunio was dead also. So yeah. 
Kunio is dead. Oh wait, no, he was brought back to life. He got resurrected or something like that because someone actually saved his life. And that guy finished buying all of the intellectual rights of the Kunio Kun series, even the Double Dragon series. A remake of the original Downtown Nikata Monogatari was released for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. It was known as Downtown Niketsu Monogatari X. Not really much to say about here, just the same thing but with more moves as ever. And it was also released in the US, known as River City Ransom X. Simply as River City Ransom X. And I gotta say, this is one of the most fun GBA games of all time. In fact, this is actually my most favorite GBA game of all time. Yeah, I mean that. I mean it. But one thing that I found really disappointing about that game is that the American version looks super identical to the Japanese version. It's like, it's the exact same thing, but just translation. I mean, they're still in their Japanese uniforms. Yeah, this game would have looked a lot better if it looked like this. But, either way, that game was the best. The next was Kunio Kun Neketsu Collection 1, 2, and 3. Yes, there are three Kunio Kun Collection games. The first game includes the Famicom versions of Neketsu Koko Dajibobu and Neketsu Street Basket. The second one is a 2-in-1 compilation which includes the Famicom version of Neketsu Koko Dajibobu, Soccer Hen, and Downtown Neketsu Koshin Kyoku. And the third one includes the Famicom versions of Downtown Special and Neketsu Hakibu, PKK. Neketsu Hakibu. And then there was the very first Kunio Kun game for the Nintendo DS. It was called Super Dodgeball Brawlers. It's a remake of the original Super Dodgeball from the NES. And it was super cool because you get to create your own Kunio Kun character. And you get to create your own team. Developed by Arc System Works. This was released in Japan as Cho Neketsu Koko Kunio Kun Dodgeball Boo. <laughs> Kun online game developed by Windysoft, which began closed beta testing in 2008 until October 22, 2010. I never actually got to play this. Next was River City Dodgeball All Stars, developed by Miracle Kids, a doujin group formed by Mitsuhiro Yoshida and Hiroyuki Sekimoto, the original game designers of River City Ransom and most of the other Famicom Kunyokun games. The Japanese title is Downtown Dodgeball Dayu Zenin Shugo. It's available from Microsoft Windows. And then there was the Kunyokun game for the Xbox 360. It was called Downtown Smash Dodgeball, released in Japan as Gekitotsu Dodgeball. This is actually the second dodgeball game developed by Miracle Kids. And then there was the second Kunyokun game for the Nintendo DS, River City Super Sports Challenge. A follow-up to Neketsu Koshin Kyoku, a remake of Neketsu Koshin Kyoku. And, believe it or not, Kunio turned into 3D, or should I say, mutated into 3D. This game was developed by Arc System Works. 
And I gotta admit, the 3D animation of Kunio and his friends, and Riki Samajima, and more Kunio-kun characters, was okay, but a bit mediocre, because they look ugly as shit. But, other than that, fits perfectly fine for Nintendo DS. However, it does not have the same story as Neketsu Koshin Kyoku. Instead, they come up with something really original. Yeah, they made a different story. So they made a remake of a game, but they didn't follow the story of the original game. Instead, they come up with something new. It's kind of like Ghostbusters 2016. The game does not follow the plot of the previous, its predecessor. Instead, the game is likely a new storyline than a sequel. This is also the first Kunyukun game to feature Mission Mode. Yeah, Mission Mode, what do you expect? Next was River City Soccer Hooligans. It's a follow-up to Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo Soccer Hen, known as Nintendo World Cup and internationally. Although the game is not a direct sequel, instead, it was continuing for River City Super Sports Challenge. Yeah, this is actually a sequel to River City Super Sports Challenge for the Nintendo DS. And that Michael Tobioka has returned, along with Stanislav and Shira. Next was Downtown Neketsu Dodgeball, the third dodgeball game developed by Miracle Kids. Unlike the first two dodgeball games, Million had involvement in the development of this game. Yeah, Million. And then there was Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun Special, a remake of Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun, to celebrate the franchise's 25th anniversary. The game features characters from Neketsu Koha Kunio-kun and Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo and Danta Neketsu Monogatari in their Danta Neketsu rendition. The Double Tiger Brothers from Neketsu Kakudo Densetsu are also featured as well. Then there was Riki Densetsu, uh, translation, Riki Legend. <laughs> Riki Legend. It was for the Nintendo 3DS. It's a Kunio-kun spin-off, starring Kunio's rival slash partner, Riki, as the main character. It is also the second game not to feature Kunio as the main character. Not really much to say about that. I assume that that game is all about Riki. The, the backstory of Riki and stuff like that. Yeah. Then there was River City Tokyo Rumble, released in Japan as Neketsu Koa Kunio-kun SP, Ranto Kyoso Kyoku. It will be later released in other regions by Natsumi. Yeah, thank god for Natsumi. And then here comes my most favorite of all. Say it with me now, River City Ransom Underground. The official sequel to River City Ransom. They feature Alex and Ryan as grown-ups. And they also feature other characters that were never in the Kunio-kun series. Instead, they had to create their own original characters. Which is pretty good. This game was actually one of my most favorite of all time. It still is my most favorite beat-em-up of all time. Even better than Double Dragon 4. I really wish this game was released in Nintendo Switch or PS4. Because it's too awesome to be just on PC or Steam. It needs to be a Nintendo Switch. They need a Switch version for River City Ransom Underground. RCRU for short. You can watch my gameplay videos, just click the link in the description down below. and leave a like if you will enjoy it. Next there was River City Knights of Justice, released in Japan as Neketsu Maho Monogatari, Hot-Blooded Magic Story. This is a spin-off featuring characters from Dante Neketsu Monogatari in a fantasy RPG setting, where Kunio is not known as Alex, but no, he is named Alexander. <laughs> That's awesome. Then there was Kunio-kun no Neketsu Street. Yeah, the very first Kunio-kun game for Android or iOS. Yeah, Kunio Kun on mobile, baby. But only released in Japan. Yeah. Then there was Downtown Neketsu Jidageki. I don't freaking know. It's a follow up to Downtown Special. You know, that sequel that 
that spin-off or something, that sequel to Downtown Nikatsu Monogatari, but whenever released in, whatever, it's actually a remake of Downtown Special. But again, this was only released in Japan, never released in America. Then there was the best Kunio-kun remake of all time, River City Super Sports Challenge All-Star Special, released in Japan as Downtown Nikatsu Koshin Kyoko Suryu blah 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 All-Star Special. It's a follow-up to Downtown Aketsu Koshin Kyoku and River City Super Sports Challenge in the Nintendo DS. It's published by H2 Interactive outside Japan. So yeah, it was also released in America. That is awesome. Feel free to click the link in the description below to watch my gameplay of it. And then there was River City Rival Showdown, released in Japan as Downtown Aketsu Monogatari SP. It's a remake of Downtown Aketsu Monogatari to celebrate the franchise's 30th anniversary. It also includes a fighting game called Fighting of Double Dragon. And then there was Kunio-kun Neketsu Complete Famicom Head, a compilation of 11 classic Kunio Famicom games. Neketsu Koa Kunio-kun, Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo, Downtown Neketsu Monogatari, Neketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo Soccer Hen, Downtown Neketsu Koshin Kyoku, aka Neketsu Dodgeball blah 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 and so on and so forth. Even the Ketsu Street Baskets here. It's basically a compilation of so much classic Famicom Kunio-kun games. If you want to play them in a Nintendo 3DS, feel free to do it. And then there was River City Melee Battle Royale Special, released in Japan as Downtown Ranto Koshin Kyoku Kachinuki Kakto SP. Yeah. It's a follow-up, a sequel, to River City Super Sports Challenge All-Star Special. However, this does not include the character customization anymore. Instead, all the characters are unlocked and you get to... and you get to feel free to play all of their stories. Yeah, there's really nothing that you can do in that game. Nothing to unlock, nothing to accomplish. It's just... I don't know, it's just a game without any unlockables. A few months ago, someone made a River City Ransom game or a Kunio-kun game for mobile, for Android, for iOS. It was called River City Ransom Kunio Returns. The second, the very second, yeah, very second, the very second Kunio-kun game for the mobile devices. It was actually pretty good. And that brings us to Kunio-kun The World Classics Collection. Scheduled for release this December in Japan. It's a compilation of classic Kunio-kun Famicom games. It contains the 11 games from Kunio-kun Neketsu Complete Famicom Hand, as well as the western versions of Renegade, Super Dodgeball, River City Ransom, and Crash and the Boys Street Challenge. Online play has been added to all of these titles. Where will Kunio and Ricky or Alex and Ryan will go from there? Only time will tell. But wherever those hot-blooded delinquents end up, keep sure to follow their hot-blooded adventure right here on Cyrus the Great. So yeah, that concludes our very first episode of history. If you want to see more, leave a like and subscribe and suggest in the comments of which history videos should I do more about. Like history of Tarzan or something like that, history of Shadow Fight. Yeah, I'm doing those too. Next time. Just subscribe and like for more. See you next time. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention.
Kunio Kun actually has a manga. Yeah, it's a gag manga called Orewa Otokoda Kunio Kun. The manga was illustrated by Kosaku Anakubo and was serialized in the monthly anthology Koro Koro Comic from 1991 to 1996, lasting 11 collected editions. This was awarded the best manga award for children's manga in 1995. And I really hope that Kunio Kun would be an anime. Please make a Kunio Kun anime. Please. Bye bye.